Hi guys, Chris here again with the Blue Fiber Tree. Um, as previously mentioned, today I am going to run you through a few basic macrame techniques and then I'm going to actually show you how to take two of those techniques and make this great little design that's right here at the bottom of the moon. Okay, so we're going to start with just, I'm going to talk, but we're going to zoom in so we can see what we're doing here. Um, you can see that I already have attached some of my cording to my dowel rod. Um, I'm going to just add the last three lark's heads that I need and I do, I go by taking my cording, which I'm using a four millimeter single strand. I'm going over my dowel rod, opening that loop and I'm dropping these two into that loop and then I just snug it up tight and then I space these however close or far apart I need them for whatever technique or pattern that I'm doing. Okay, so the lark set again, fold your cord in half, go over your dowel rod, open up the loop you created by folding it in half, pull your cords through, and then snug tight. Okay, I'm going to add one more strand, and then we're going to move on to another stitch. Over the dowel rod, open the loop, and drop your two cords through. That is a lark's head, okay? It is the most common way to attach your cords to a dowel rod. So now once you have your lark's heads in, that's a hard thing to say, you can, what I like to do is I like to do, um, let's just say we're going to do a double half hitch. I'm going to take my outer strand, and I'm going to do just a horizontal double half hitch, which comes straight across your work and snugs right up to your lark's heads. Take your outside cord and you can go from left to right or right to left. I just like working left to right because that's how I read and it just works better for me. So you take your next cord after the cord you're using. This is called your filler cord and this is your working cord and we go over that filler cord and we come behind the top of the cord as it comes out of our lark head. So we're coming behind that and you are using your thumb to gently push up on your filler cord and you are lightly pulling down on your working cord. If you pull it like this, and you bring both strands horizontal, it will look like you tied a shoe and you won't have this up and down bump that you create with pulling down. The second stitch goes over your filler cord and in between this loop that you create and I'm pushing up with my thumb, lightly pulling down. And when you're done, a full double half hitch will have two bumps and then your working cord will come down. After you've done those two bumps, you pick up the next cord and you repeat this process all the way across your work. <clears throat> when would you use this in your pieces? Um, I use this I tend to use this atop the, atop the crop, atop, on the top, I can't say that word, but on the top of all of my pieces under my lark set, if I'm doing like a full macro weave piece, I tend to put a row of this in there. I use this when I'm macro weaving to separate segments. Um, and as soon as I do this one, we'll come back and we'll do a diagonal just so they can see what that diagonal looks like. Mm -hmm. Um... I use it to create, this stitch is what's used right here to create the shapes that you make within macrame projects. Um, and a lot of people, if they don't like how loose that filler cord is going across the top, you can use a rubber band to hold it in place. You can wrap it around and just kind of pull so that stays a little more taut. You can use that clip with the magnet that I was talking about in the last video to hold that off to the side, either or. 
So it's a great way to <clears throat> make designs yep. and then fill in with some other things later. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's the main part of macroweave. It's the main part of your framework. Like you can't do macroweave without knowing this stitch. Okay. This knot. And the biggest part, the hardest part that I find people have trouble with, with the double half hitch, is that they want to pull like this. So their knots, instead of being vertical when they're done, their knots are at a diagonal, or you can't see the knot because it does look like you've tied a shoe. And I, that's, I, when I teach it, I'm constantly going, not like a shoelace. Right. So, <clears throat> but. So the importance of the tension on that yeah. uh, passive piece that you're using. The attention on yeah, the on that cord? One. Yeah. yeah. Um, it, the looser that cord gets, the more your horizontal line is going to accidentally drag and drop. Um, without that tension, I can't keep my row even. Right. So, so I keep reaching over and, and tugging, but really your right hand is the one that's kind of keeping that in check when you pull that through. Mm -hmm. okay. Yep. I, that's what that thumb is doing. That thumb is holding up that filler cord to keep it up. Even if it's loosened here, as long as I'm pushing up with my thumb, I'm able to keep things where they need to be. Mm -hmm. Now, should those... And this is me asking this question. Yeah. So you're when fine. you're done with that two-step process of doing the double half hitch, yep. those two cores that you're using from your Lark's head, they yeah. should be about the same width as the Lark's head when you're done? They're going to be a little bit wider. Okay. It's going to be a tiny bit wider because you're literally taking something that was two strands. And you're making four. And you're making four. So it's going to push... You're gonna, you can see right here, it's gonna push out a little. And if I had left myself enough room here, it might've pushed back a little, there you go. So you'll see it comes out a little and out a little on the sides. And then when you're done, you take your working cord, your filler cord, sorry, and you drop it because he now becomes somehow a part of your piece. Mm -hmm. um, some people will take that piece and weave it into the back later and not use it, but then you lose your count of your cords. So I personally don't like doing that. Sorry, I had to grab my, I needed my little clip. All right, so when I'm coming back and I wanna do a dia, I can come back and do another horizontal clove hitch directly underneath that or I can do a diagonal. When you're working a diagonal, you have to remember to keep these bumps vertical. You don't want these guys to tilt. You want them to remain up and down unless you're creating a piece like this and then you're literally trying to follow a curve, okay? But to do the diagonal, I form my line and because I'm working right to left, instead of coming up over my filler cord, and back down to the left, I'm gonna come up over my filler cord and back down to the right. And again, I want the end of my working cord to come behind itself up top. You see how that comes down, over? And we want that guy to line up right underneath the last bump that we did in the row. Now that can be difficult depending on the cord that you're using. So oh, for sure. yeah, I struggle with the first couple when I'm changing directions. Most people do. And a lot of people, the other part that people have trouble with is maintaining straight cords in the background. Mm -hmm. Like these tend to go like this a little mm -hmm. and that's just time, practice, patience. You know, and even the one, even when I'm doing this, as much as I've done macrame, my cording will still snug to the, it'll mm -hmm. swing a little bit of a direction. It's almost impossible. I'm, I've seen people who do it perfectly straight and I'm like, God bless you. 
If you could teach me how you keep those cords in the background perfectly up and down, go ahead. But usually I'm in too much of a hurry to take the time to make them completely straight. Yeah, it adds character to the piece too. Sure. That's what we're going with. But you can see as I continue, I'm just, again, with my left, I'm holding that filler cord where I want. And with my right, I'm bringing my cords over. The biggest part of learning how to do the double half hitch is managing your cords. If you manage the tension on your cords and you really pay attention to that, you will have probably mastered a lot and saved yourself a lot of trouble. A lot of things, people just kind of haphazardly, like I've watched people like pick up right here and pull the cording over and try to create that and then pull the whole cord through. Well, that's a lot of work instead of just picking up my end and doing with my end what I need. I go to the end of my cord, I pull it over, I'm guiding my cords where I want them, and then I'm following through. And you can see, I'm doing the best I can at keeping them vertical, but there's still a tilt. It's just how it's going to be. No, I was just wanted the knot also will yep. do that. <clears throat> So that is very simply a diagonal half hitch, or excuse me, a diagonal double, <sighs> double half hitch, double half hitch. My brain stopped. There you go. Real simple. Okay. And then I'm not going to take anything apart, but we're just going to do a quick refresher on a square knot. And I'm going to do a right handed square knot. So you pick up your right cord, make a backwards four, lay your left cord over the bar that you created, take it up behind the two center cords, and up through. And we pull. There we go. We want it flat. Now, to finish that, I make a four, drop my right cord over, take it behind the two filler cords in the center, up through the four, And there is a very simple square knot. If you manage a lark set, your double half hitches, and you could master a square knot, you can create almost anything. <coughs> this piece is mostly the only thing that's on here that's not in here are figure eight knots and this twist. A twist is very simply coming in, and we're going to do that first half of the square knot. And instead of coming back with the other four, we're just going to keep repeating the exact same stitch over and over and over. The thing with doing this is as you're working, your piece is twisting. So you kind of got to pay attention. You can see that twist that I'm already getting. I'm always only picking up my right hand side. Now granted, as I turn, this now feels like my right hand side, but it's not because we've twisted. I'm going to still pick up this cord because it came from my right. And I'm going to continue to make that twist. The biggest part of doing the right handed twist is that you are fully pulling tight when you make that. Because if you're doing these half knots loose, these right-handed half square knots loose, you're not going to twist. You're just going to hang out and, and it's going to look funny. So I'm going to do that backwards. It's probably going to be wrong, but I think I'm seeing it correctly. We'll find out. Yes, there we go. 
I always have to do that one backwards and then I come back and I can pick it back up like I did. But see, as I keep going, I'm just making the same half of a square knot and it can be a right or a left. It doesn't matter as long as whichever one you do, you do through the whole entire piece. And you will just continue to do that until that little twist is as long as you would like it to be. Um, to create this, it looks way harder than it is. And it's really simple. We start in our center. You can see right here, we're starting in our center. I am literally picking up the strand that's next to my center. So I take the right one in the center, left one in the center, comes underneath it, and I am gonna do a double half hitch right here. And I'm pushing it right up underneath the Lark's Knot instead of keeping it vertical. That center cord that I wrap around, that's becoming my filler cord that I'm gonna be wrapping all of those knots around. And I'm gonna continue moving to the left of my piece, doing a full double half hitch. And you can see the angle that was created there, right? And you can see right here, you have pieces that are dropping, okay? I'm gonna move this guy up out of the way. There we go. We use six Lark's heads are here and there's still one strand hanging on each side when we're done, okay? Because this is made at the center of the moon piece. This can be done with less cords. It can be done with more. You'll just have to do different types of knots in the center to fill in your center or it's gonna look funny, just so you know. But I'm just following a diagonal right now. That's it. I'm just creating a diagonal, just like this. And I'm going to come to this side. And I'm going to do the exact same thing. My center one becomes my filler cord. And I'm pushing him up there. Oh my goodness. I momentarily forgot how to do a knot. That was bad. See, shoestring. Let's not do that. Find the end of my cord. I'm always trying to come back to the end of my cord because when I pull from the center to go up and around, I end up doing bad things and my knots don't look pretty. Remember that last cord on the very end of both sides we're not doing anything with. He's just hanging out looking cute. This one come in here. All right. So now that you've made those knots, now you're gonna come in and find your four center cords and you're gonna do a square knot. Again, I don't care if it's right or it's left, as long as all four knots that we create in this piece <clears throat> look alike. I'm gonna pull this up to the very top. I want it snug, but not so snug that it lifts, okay? Okay, now you can see over here, this follows like an alternating square knot pattern where we drop to and we pick up two. So we now have another square knot that we're gonna snug up underneath him. Constantly tugging down on those center filler cords because I wanna keep this nice and neat and clean. And whatever tension you use to create one square knot, make the same knot with the same. Picking up the four cords on the other side, doing a square knot over here. So you will have two square knots that fit equally, kind of in the center of your little piece.
Okay, now we come back and we find our two center pieces. We're gonna create another square knot here. That's that guy. Okay, you can already see the beginnings of that taking place. So now the trick is to use the rest of these cords that are hanging up to the center. You're always coming back and finding your center. Find my filler cord. So I wanna make sure I'm picking up my cords in the way that I'm supposed to. I'm gonna do my double half hitch again. And I'm gonna have you pardon me for one second because I'm gonna swap to the other side. And now I wanna bring it, I'm bringing, I'm using this guy to bring it in. See how my filler cord moved? Which is nice because you can change the direction and need very time you easily. Want. Yep. That is the whole point of this is being able to change that direction. That's what allows you to make those those cool leaves and mm -hmm. stuff. It's, you know, it, like you said, it looks really complicated, but once you break it down, it's really easy. Yeah. And see, now I'm taking this <clears throat> side, coming over. The biggest part about making a continuous flow of a shape, how this goes from one side to the next and you just keep coming down, is making sure that when you get to this cross section, I'm gonna show you here in just one second. You have to decide which one, which side, your right or your left side, is going to be the side that cuts across. Like, is my left side gonna come across like this one does? Well, if that's the case, let me finish my last stitch here. All right, so now I've completed the same amount of knots on each side, used every single strand. If this is going to be my side that cuts over and not this, we then have to do, this is our filler cord, okay? We're gonna take that filler cord from the right and use it over the filler cord from the left with a double half hitch and that continues our pattern. And then to continue the pattern, all you do is you keep doing, you bring the next cord down. This maintains my filler cord and we're gonna put all of our double half hitches in with these guys and you're gonna let those cords extend and drop like they do in this right here. And then you create the same pattern and you just keep going down as long as you would like. Those are really cool. So these are those motifs that you can make in any project. Yes. And, and don't be afraid to play with different patterns. No, there are so, so, so many different patterns out there. Um, I will try to find a uh, couple of the books that have some really great fun patterns and I'll put them up on our Facebook page for the blue fiber tree so people can have a reference tool to some of these cool patterns that you can put. There, There's a lady I saw, she did curtains for her kitchen, just a valance even, and it just had this shape coming down and it started longer and it lifted up and it was really cute. Mm -hmm. It was just neat. Um, so. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope that you understand that with the double half hitch and the square knot, you can make almost anything. Mm -hmm. You just have to know those two things. The only thing different was I did a half square knot. And then in the bobbly bits down here, it's a simple figure eight knot that's really easy to learn. So none of it is super hard. You just have to learn to break your segments down so it doesn't feel overwhelming. Right. I hope that everybody has a wonderful time macrame. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and we'll be happy to answer you. 
please like, subscribe, share our YouTube channel. We are trying to grow. We want to hit that 300 now. We're getting there. Um, follow us both, Longtail Knits, Alchemy, and the Blue Fiber Tree on Facebook. And please visit our websites, longtailknits.com, alchemy.com. And we hope to see you soon. See you in a couple weeks. Bye, guys.